Smith. You're listening to Electrician Live with your host, Paul Abernathy. What up, what up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Electrician Live. My name is Paul Abernathy. As always, welcome to Videocast Podcast. Looking looking kind of scruffy here tonight. Hey, Mark, thanks for following. Appreciate you. So I usually come on on Wednesday evenings about 7.30-ish to be able to do a demo. For those that are interested in a demo, tonight we are doing a demo of the Electricity 101 course. So what is it? Who is this course for, for those that will be watching this? Hello, Corey. Welcome to the to the actual uh, video stream. Um, so the actual course that I'm talking about tonight is going to be our Electricity 101 course. It's kind of showing people, I've been, been getting some emails from people who asked me about wanting things like theory and all these other things, right? So I figure I'd do one tonight on, uh, on the concept of uh, the Electricity 101 course, which is a neat course, but uh, it's a lot of stuff. But I uh, figured I'd show it tonight. What's up, Nelson? Thanks for coming in. Victor, what's up? I'm doing good, sir. Thanks for showing up. Edgar, what's up? Y'all are probably thinking, what? Two nights in a row for Paul? God, I love you. That's why I'm here. Anyway, um... So, as you know, usually on Wednesday nights at around 7.30, I always do my demos. And tonight I'm doing a demo of the electrical or Electricity 101 course. Of course, I'll answer any questions you might have or any other courses we offer if you want to see those as well. But I'm going to talk tonight uh, about the courses a little bit. And so, let's take a, let's kind of go and look at the uh, the Electricity 101 course uh, and uh, see what that's all about, guys. So let's go on and see if I can do it here. Let me, there we go. So there's my stream. Everything's good. All right, stream looks good. So for those that aren't familiar that haven't done my Fast Tracks or haven't done any of our other programs, all of them are based on, the, on my Cengage Backbone platform. Uh, and so, and we tweak it. To, is necessary for certain things like this one here. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do here is move this. Uh, no, nah, you know what? I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it just like that. Let's see if I can't hold on here. Let me transform it and see fit the screen. There we go. So what we're looking at here is, I don't know why I'm so low on the screen. Here we go. That'll work. All right, so we're going to look at the program a little bit and kind of get a, get a look and see what's in this program uh, so that you have a better understanding of it. Uh, one of the things you also get in this program is you'll see that there's an electrical guide for HVAC, electrical and wiring guide, uh, troubleshooting guide, simulators, tech simulators. This is a very detailed uh, program. Uh, and so... This is really what you tell people that really want to get a grasp of the fundamentals, the theories, electrical circuits, basic theories, understanding wires, circuits, conductors, all the, the things that we all as electricians wish we had had back when we were, whether you went to school or not. So uh, this program is designed for people that really want the core back history stuff, uh, you know, safety, Ohm's law. Uh, people ask about it, basic electrical circuits, the concept. Some of this might be extremely basic for some people, and some it's going to get pretty detailed. Um, it's really probably not tonight, Corey. Uh, that's for um, tonight's. I, I just do demos, uh, that type of thing. I have a transformer video that's designed, a series that's designed for all those things to do with transformers. Um that type of thing for primary to secondary and turns ratio and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I don't know that I don't have the slides and it's too hard to convey it with that. Just talking about primary, secondary KVA on primary. Uh, if it's 480, you divide it by the uh, 831 to get your uh, 
values for the primary side and uh, that type of thing. But I don't, I don't have any slides geared up tonight, Corey. Send me an email. I'll, I'll try to do that and set up a special night for that. But it's kind of hard to do Transformers on the fly. I'd have to load up the Transformer program, and I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be here that long tonight. I'm just doing demos tonight. Last night I was here for four hours. Tonight I'm not going to do it. Over on our YouTube channel. Over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com, same way you got here. Go and you just go look back and you'll see I have a Transformer series, part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, part six. It's a full six-part series. That's why I say it's too much to get into it here. I've got a whole series that is on it. So just go to youtube.com forward slash master the NEC and you can go and click on the playlist. I think under the calculations it'll be there or you go to the top right and you click it, and you can actually go to the older episodes, and you'll find it, definitely uh, find it. Or you could go to our page and then do the search and type Transformers, and I'm sure they'll all come up there. But I go into extensive explanations of Transformers on there. Okay, okay? And, and that would bog me down tonight, and I'm really trying to just show programs tonight, and I apologize. But I, um, but I always get that when I come on. I mean, I'm uh, people love asking the questions, and I don't have a problem with that, but... Uh, but we have a video series that you can watch on that one. So anyway, uh, you have all these guides that are in here. They're all available, uh, like electrical wiring guide. I'll click on it so you can kind of get an idea what we're talking about here. So you see here, it's it goes through, and it's the guide that you actually use this with our online simulator. So you see, in this program, you get online simulators so that you can actually add switches and it shows you how to, you know, how you wire them. And if you wire it wrong, it'll tell you if it's wiring wrong. So it's kind of great for people, apprentices, helpers, things like that, that are really learning electrical systems. It's great for that program. Um, so they're all available, the guides. And of course it gets into all the basics. And I just want to give you an idea. So atomic structure, uh, Ohm's law, static electricity, magnetism, all those things that you wanted to know. This is built on the Del Mar platform. So, for example, if you look at Ohm's law, I'll just go into the reading. So you've got reading. Check this out. You've got videos. Here's the Ohm's law, for example. I'll click on that. Just kind of show you what it takes you to. It takes you to a player. And it's Since electrical values of voltage, current, and resistance are standard for everyone, these values can be used in mathematical formulas. The first person to establish this relationship was a German scientist named George S. Ohm. Ohm's. These laws concerning electricity are known as Ohm's law, which is the basis for almost all electrical calculation. From his experiments, Ohm proved that in a DC circuit, the current is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance. Ohm's experiments resulted in mathematical formulas that we use to calculate. So as you can see, we have a, a ton of, and of course you can make it big screen, ton of incorporated, there's tons of videos in it uh, on all subjects. The reading material, again, is some of the best out there. It's it's through it. It's it's in partnership with the Del Mar platform. Again, it talks about Ampere. Get you a better understanding of Ampere, what a Coulomb is, uh, and it kind of breaks it down in the graphics to to show you all of this theories. Uh, really good solidifies electron flow theory things like that. So it really walks you through it. And we have electron flow, and then we have conventional theory. Okay. Um, and again, this the conventional theory was defined by Benjamin Franklin, but uh, it just kind of shows you here the concept. And it just really walks you through all of the actual basic fundamentals, speed of current, you know, the conductor. Again, this kind of when I try to explain to people uh, how you have the different atoms. Of course, you got protons and neutrons and you have the electrons and this electrons in the outer valence shell. Uh, it's actually this, the, the movement of the electrons, which actually go from, from atom to atom based on the amount of voltage that's applied and it causes the excitement and the electrons are cast out of their orbit. And you take an electron, an atom that's next to the one 
and it lost this electron and it becomes unstable to the point where it now uh, has to attract, it becomes positively charged and it has to attract that negative electron from the one that just got cast off from the atom that's beside it. That kind of concept theory is what really creates you know, the concept of uh, electrical flow. And so it really goes through that and talks about the distance formulas, gives you some you know, data ratios, the things, things you just can read over, basic electrical circuits. So it's a really basic core fundamental. Uh, again, it's got tons of uh, videos that are in, embedded in it as far as the program as well. Talks about heat, resistance, understanding heat, larger wire, uh, how that affects, you know, different how that affects on the conductor when a certain amount of resistance involved. And just a real detailed uh, in videos in, in the whole program. And, of course, you have your uh, reviews, chapter reviews. So you've got all these quizzes that you have to take. Uh, and uh, they'll get submitted. And a lot of these I grade personally. Uh, and then you got your practice test. And so it's, if you're really looking for something, people ask me all the time, they want to just further their knowledge uh, in electrical. And so if you're an apprentice or you're a, a journeyman or you're, you know, even a master can always, you know, get some more knowledge. There's a lot of activities in here, even, you know, static electricity, uh, all those type of things involved in it, all in the reading material. So that's kind of our electricity 101. And then it gets down in the basic circuits. And it'll cover, you know, series, parallel, combination circuits at series and parallels. Uh, there's videos. Again, all these videos that try to explain all of that uh, people find complicated. These are pretty good videos that really break it down. So all that's in your program as well. Meters, wire sizing, small sort, you know, basics of alternating current. Alternating current contain, you know, in this one here is pretty neat chapter here because basically it gets into uh, inductance of AC circuits and, and resistive inductive circuits, resistive inductive, it's just really stuff that you think and learn. Uh, three phase, talks about three phase circuits and the relationship and uh, the three phases, 120 degrees out of phase. Transformers, a lot in there, single phase and three phase transformers. So even getting you down to basics of transformers, one of the better programs on that because it talks about transformers, uh, single phase, three phase, Y connected, closed delta, high leg connections. For example, I click on the high leg connection one and you'll get a, a video, for example. But you can make them bigger. So this is just a really covers a lot Another of Another type of three phase connection used to supply power to both three-phase and single-phase loads is the high leg connection. This system is formed by center tapping one of the windings of a delta-connected secondary. This arrangement generally provides voltages of 240 and 120. When the high leg connection is used, one transformer will generally have a higher KVA rating than the other two. Mm -hmm. The reason sure. for this is that one transformer must supply all the single phase load plus its share of any three phase load connected to it. The other two transformers supply only their share of three phase load. The high leg system gets its name from the fact that one of the three phase lines will exhibit a higher voltage when compared to the neutral conductor than the other two. In the typical high leg connection, the secondary voltage of each transformer is 240 volts. If one transformer is center tapped, the voltage from either of its legs to the center tap will be approximately 120 volts. The three phase line not connected to the center tap transformer, however, will have a voltage of approximately 208 volts. The national- While the guy shows 215 on the screen, that's because of the transformers that he was using. <laughs> Small little transformers for demonstration. But it's approximately because you rarely get it to be exactly 208, especially if you have a true RMS meter and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, shout out to everybody. Uh, Estrada, hey, you didn't miss anything. All I'm doing, most people know that on Wednesday nights, I just do demos of products, all of our products, our courses that we offer. Uh, this is our electrical or electricity 101 course 
it literally is, is, is detailed in all the things that it has. So it talks about transformers, videos for everything, reading material. Uh, obviously there's ex questions to test your knowledge so that you really solidify it. Uh, but again, the same thing would be for single phase here for, you know, videos for single phase as well. Uh, line isolation, transformer formulas, turns ratio. So you're asking about that, right? So you want to know about the video. So I could basically, we have a video that's on that. As I mentioned earlier, all values of a transformer are proportional to its turns ratio. Screen. To solve transformer values, a lot of people find it's easier to use the turns ratio instead of using formulas. In the previous example, we found these missing values using transformer formulas. Now we'll determine these same values using the turns ratio. Any two like values can be used to find the turns ratio. In this example, both primary so and secondary looks, voltages like are known. One to four ratio. So we'll use them to determine the turns ratio. Divide the larger value by the smaller value. 480 divided by 120 equals 4. This transformer has a turns ratio of 1 to 4. <gasps> Isn't that what I this said? This means that there is anyway, one turn so of wire in the primary winding. It's just a really good series. It really... For, I think this is a neat one even for electricians because it just... We do a lot of things... And we don't know why we do it. And this one answers all those questions. Why we do what we do. Why, why things that we take for granted. Um, why does this do that? Why does this do that? And so um, it's just a really good. And I'd rather put it into a package like this where you get everything rather than piecemeal it. I mean, here's it's, we're talking about auto transformers. People don't understand those. Here's one for formulas. We go over the formulas Here's the transformer values, and you and you and you and it's all this is also in the reading material. So this is other neat thing that you get, and of course you get the book right here on the right. You get to click the book, uh, but for example, you've got the values, and then you've got the material that you read, uh, understanding the ratios, and it explains ratios four to one, one to four, depending on primary to secondary. Really good graphics, make it simple, gives you the typical formulas and the values here. That's the number of turns primary, number of turns secondary, uh, voltage E on the primary, voltage secondary, amps primary, or current, current secondary. And so you get these formulas that you can jot down, learn, uh, and solve equations. But these are standardized formulas that you will get used to. Line isolation, so uh, transformer formulas, turns ratio, uh, all these current transformer. Here you get a slideshow uh, that goes through this you just simply read the slideshow that's pretty neat uh, and it just walks you through each one kind of see what it looks like on a meter okay the turns okay all the values so I mean it's if you're not familiar with some of the stuff it can get, get confusing but anyway that's in part of the program uh, these people were asking the other day about DC motors question about DC motors well you know there's here you go, series motor, shunt motor, compound motors, torque motors. So you click on the torque motor. And what better way than to compile all these things in one place? Example. So. Torque is the turning force developed by the motor. There are three factors that determine the amount of torque in an induction motor. The strength of the magnetic field of the stator. The strength of the magnetic field of the rotor and the phase angle difference between stator and rotor flux. An induction motor's maximum torque is produced when rotor and stator flux are in phase with each other. To understand this concept, consider these two bar magnets. One is like the magnetic field developed by the stator winding, and the other is like the magnetic field developed around the rotor by the induced current. The amount the of force required to pull them the apart and it's is directly pieces, proportional to the strength the or flux density fields. of the two magnets. When the magnets are connected directly together like this, there is no angular difference between the two. You could say that these two magnetic fields are in phase with each other. Mm -hmm. When the magnets are separated by some angle, however, the magnetic attraction between the two is less. This is like the magnetic fields of the two magnets being out of phase with each other. 
The greater the phase angle between the two magnetic fields, the weaker the attraction between the two. This is why the rotor of an induction motor can never reach synchronous speed. If it were to turn at the same speed as the rotating magnetic field, there'd be no induced voltage in the rotor and consequently no rotor current. Without rotor current, there could be no rotor magnetic field and the motor could not develop any torque. At no load, the rotor will accelerate to a point that it can develop enough torque to overcome its own losses, such as bearing friction and windage loss. So anyway, all of that gets accompanying with reading material that explains those type of things even in more detail, and then you then you watch, then you watch the video. So it kind of goes through the DC motors, and of course it'll get it'll end up down here at AC motors, and it'll talk about harmonics, uh, three phase alternators, three phase motors, single phase motors, uh, motor installations. Interesting down here. We'll do some of the reading for the motor installations. Kind of let you see. Uh, so again, you see there's quite a bit here, but you now let's look at motor current. So it talks about motor current in the code, gives reference, so it kind of gives us reference to the tables that we've talked about before, uh, 430, 247, 248, 249, or even 250. Uh, and of course, gives you those tables, and we'll attempt to explain them in a little more detail. And then it'll talk a little bit about single phase motors, and you know, and you'll look things up on the table. Then it'll talk about three phase motors, show you how to look those things up, and con uh, determining conductor size for a motor. It'll walk you through that. And you know, it'll remind you of terminal limitations, which was interesting because over on the Facebook page, uh, it kind of had an example of it got me because I was thinking reality versus what was asking a question. So you always got to read that question. But anyway, there you go there. Notice it's 81.2. Drop the point two. It's just 81 amps. So anyway, that's kind of that's kind of the program in itself. It's just a lot. Three phase motors. It talks about a relationship, phase relationships, and all that kind of stuff. For it. So that's the the uh, the the working guide to electricity. We call it electrical or electrical 101. So main, uh, most of this stuff reminds me back when I was in just in vocational school and we had to, to learn all that stuff, you know. It's just the basics. Learn the basic concepts, for, you know, if you're not familiar with it. Let's see here who's all in here. Uh, Frank, good evening. Muhammad, good evening. Uh, yep, same thing I remember. First year, second year, apprenticeship or vocational program. No, certainly. I remember it, as, remember it all too well. Uh, hey, Kevin. Thanks for jumping in. So this is the demo of the electrical or electricity 101. You've known any apprentices, journeymen's, people starting out who want something with a lot of quizzes, test their knowledge or whatever, talks about uh, meters, explains meters, wire, basic circuits, series parallels, formulas for transformers, motors, AC motors, DC motors, all those little nuanced things, this is a great course uh, for that. So just wanted to, you know, do something in, to show you, you know, show everybody about this, okay? Uh, again, conductor sizing, you've got, you know, the reading material as well. So again, using NEC charts, it's just a good solidifying and understanding the information uh, as you move through conductor material, conductor sizing, stuff that many people we just take for granted. Insulation, conductor, that looks like, that looks like coax, to be honest with you. It's so thick insulation and so little conductor. I don't know what that is, but it's what it looks like. Um, so, it, you know, it'll run you through some examples. Find the maximum operating temperature for RHW, that type of thing. Uh, so um, just really good course for somebody that's really under learning, trying to learn the, the, the basic core understanding of electrical principles. Uh, again, goes over correction factors, adjustment of corrections, using 31050B2A and B3A, uh, and how to do the adjustments. Very colorful graphics that Mr. Herman uses in this book. Uh, so, 
anyway, it walks you through how to do the adjustment and corrections and, and how to apply them and, and all this good stuff. Just a good basic, basic electricity course. Uh, I probably would today, any helper that I hired, I probably would make them go through this program. Uh, if I had, you know, helper, uh, you know, I would make them go through it. Just because, you know what, they need that foundation. Just makes life a little easier. Then as they're pulling wire and they get older, electrician, they, they take the stuff for granted. But it's always nice to, you know, you know, I, I'm always nice to uh, get it from the, you know, learn it from the basics, learn it from the very beginning. So that's what this course, that's what that course is all about. So that's our electricity 101 course. So if you know anybody that's interested in, in, in understanding the basics and learning the basics and getting all that stuff down, uh, it's, a, it's a great course. I wouldn't necessarily say this is need necessary for exam prep, but to be honest with you, there's a lot of stuff in here that you learn, uh, you know, um, whereas exam prep kind of stuff is you know the code a little bit, so you're, you're learning to go through it. On this one, it, it, this is just getting you back to the very basics. It's talking about everything from the atomic level, the electrons, protons, neutrons, the relationship, the proton, neutron at the, at the core, uh, electron flow, valence shells, understanding electron movement, uh, conventional uh, current flow. Uh, all that kind of stuff is discussed in here. Uh, so it's this really interesting course. So I just wanted to be able to, I just wanted to show you the course. Y'all can see any of the courses that we offer when I do demo night like this. You just tell me which course you want to see something on. And, uh, and it's, it, I'll, I'm more than happy to do it. We, everybody knows we have grounding and bonding courses. We have the electricity 101. We have residential, commercial, industrial, motor control, Hold on. Um, motor control. Uh, I don't know what I was at. Industrial. Um, and, of course, we have, you know, obviously the Fast Tracks program. Uh, so quite a few. But this is this would be your fundamentals. That's right, Frank. This this is a, this would be your fundamentals course right here. Uh, it really covers all those fundamental things, you know, that you need to understand. I mean, as you see on the screen, it, it talks AC circuits containing capacitors, uh, AC circuits containing resistance, inductive capacitance. I mean, it's just, if you're looking, if, you're, if you've been one of those people that always just scratch your head and say, I really want to know what something means, you know, <laughs> then this is, the, this is the one, you know, for, for example, check us out on the capacitors, which people don't understand have a hard time understanding capacitors. Um, dielectric constant. People know that XHHW has a high dielectric constant, but they don't understand the concept. So 53 seconds, you can't go wrong here, man. It's like, all right, teach me something. Since most of the energy of a capacitor is stored in the dielectric, the type of dielectric used is very important in the construction of a capacitor. Air has a dielectric constant of one. To determine the dielectric constant of different materials, the capacitance of a capacitor is measured using air as the dielectric between the plates. The dielectric material is then inserted without changing the spacing, and the capacitance is measured again. If yes, the capacitance has the increased material. five times, the material has a dielectric constant of five. Some common dielectric materials are bakelite, ceramic, paper, rubber, mica, glass, and Teflon. So when we see things like on wire and we're looking for a dielectric constant, it's, it's, it's basically reducing the potential for charge. And a lot of the products that we deal with, for example, wire and cable, we're looking for uh, the, the dielectric value uh, to be sufficient because we don't want the capacitance to build up through our insulating medium. Uh, as it opposes other, because then you get you know, uh, uh, the problem with, with uh, different types of um, inductive reactants and, and, and all things that could cause problems in our circuits. So when we're designing. So I mean, just all kinds of just good stuff in here if you want to learn what it is. Uh, not going too awful deep, just good stuff you want to learn. Uh, but again, it's, it's, if you know anybody, this is called the uh, Electricity 101 course. 
Uh, it's just a nice course to have and use. Again, it's the same cost as our other ones. And all of them, my deal was to get them all at the same price. And you have access to it for, for a whole year, go in and out of it. If you know a student or somebody that's learning, a uh, vocational student or whatever, uh, or apprenticeship program, or you know somebody in an apprenticeship program and they're struggling with the different concepts, or maybe even you are struggling with the concepts of capacitive, reactive, inductive reactants, and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's a great little course, okay? Uh, so uh, that type of thing. Um, what's your question here, Caleb? Hello, late for the party. Hello, no, great material. Caleb, do batteries work on dielectric constant? Well, the dielectric constant is the actual medium used in a capacitive condition. So I don't, I, I think anything that creates a charge onto something uh, can create a, a dielectric constant or through a certain material. So I don't know if it's directly related to a battery, but I know the battery is being used as a source through insulating material, certain type of material. Uh, but I don't think of batteries as the material. I think of batteries as the source. Okay. And the dielectric constant between it is really trying to, uh, is the amount of measurement of uh, the actual capacitance can be transferred from one plate to another plate or from one component to another component. So it's not so much in the batteries, but um, anything that can generate current uh, probably, but Typically, in that scenario, as you'll see here, uh, the dielectric constant obviously is, is more of a problem really in an AC circuit. So I'm not aware of any DC circuit that creates an issue with the dielectric constant, uh, having to worry about it. We certainly don't worry about it as much in anything that we produce when it comes to the, our, our types of insulating material. But, but any material, that's why I say batteries, that's kind of, it, it more so happens in an AC circuit because of the expanding and collapsing magnetic field in the capacitance that can take place. Uh, but I'll be the first to tell you, and I tell people this all the time, uh, we offer the courses and I, have, and I moderate a lot of the stuff where the questions come in, but I wouldn't consider myself a, a, an expert on any of those things. I'm a code guy and I teach uh, um that type of thing. But most of the time any, in our world, when we're thinking of dielectric constant, it's usually all AC driven. Uh, there's usually a not enough force and not enough issues uh, with the DC being able to generate anything that's of any substantial amount. Doesn't mean it can't happen maybe in, in, in an application, but I think it's more AC driven than it is DC driven for the most part. Uh, there are, again, other people that are far more experts than I am on this subject. Uh, like I say, I'm a code guy, so, uh, but we offer the course and it's through Cengage course. And the difference is we will grade your work. We will look at your work and we'll give, you know, uh, there's a, a lot of areas in here where I, you know, am pretty good at it. Uh, but, uh, I'm not an expert on every aspect of it. Um, the book does a good job of explaining it, the, the content in the videos and everything does a much better job than I probably could explain some of the topics in it. But anyway, that's the course. Uh, and there's a lot of a lot of good info in there. Uh, again, I didn't look at this one. So small sources of electricity, conduction in liquids and gases, batteries, and other sources of electricity. So if I click this, I probably have some videos. So check this out. Voltaic cells, primary cells, cell voltage. All of these are videos. Okay. So, you know, if I'm like, what's a, what's a, a voltic, voltic cell, right? So you go, okay. Let's see where it is. We're just playing tonight, seeing what we The got. term battery is often misused. What most people usually call a battery is actually a voltaic cell. Most flashlight batteries, like this one, are single cells. A battery is actually a group of cells connected together to produce a higher voltage or current. The common automobile battery, for example, 12. contains six cells connected in oh, series. Six, three and three. Each cell produces two volts. It doesn't take much to make a basic voltaic cell. You need two unlike metals, such as a nickel and a penny, and an electrolyte to separate the two metals. This will be an old-fashioned spit battery. So we'll use 
a piece of paper soaked with saliva Spit. as our electrolyte. There you go. You see, the saliva contains acid that acts as an electrolyte. And you know what? Some people spit got now, more acid than that. Notice other that when the voltmeter leads are reversed, <laughs> the meter indicates a negative voltage value, illustrating that a voltage is actually being produced. Wow. The amount of voltage produced by a cell is determined by the materials it's made from. This is part of a special list of metals called the electromotive series of metals that ranks metals in order of their ability to accept electrons. The metals at the top of the list accept electrons more easily than those at the bottom. The farther apart the metals are on the list, the higher the voltage developed by the cell. Although a cell can be constructed from virtually any two unlike metals, not all combinations are practical. Bottom. Right, you know what I find interesting metals about in this? Hold on, by look a cell at this. Is look determined what's at the very by top. The it's made Lithium. From. This is part of a special... You know, that would kind of be the reason that everything's gone through lithium. You know, it's top of the scale. So it, it's, you know, everything's going to... You know, anyway, interesting concept. So just a bunch of stuff, you know. I tell people it may be worth your investment. may not be worth your investment. But it's just good, good info. See where stream is going. Stream is going okay. All right. So, um, so it's just some good info. It's all here. Um, and the one thing that we've done to it is made sure that we've interacted enough, uh, added our own questions. Most people know that my softwares and things that we do with them, we can add our own stuff. So we've added a lot of questions to test your knowledge after you watch it. So it's really good if you know anybody that's in the, uh, that have, uh, uh, that are just learning the basics or want to learn the basics. But again, I guarantee you that I know plenty of electricians who are like, dude, I, I want to watch that stuff. So I get a kick out of it. I get into it and look at it. Dude, I, you know, most people know that the courses you go through in school, they don't cover all these topics. So to have somebody have it put together in one concise thing, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so anyway, that's that. So, is any, you know, so anybody, and of course, at the whole time, you have access to the book right here. Uh, you know, you've got all kinds, you know, flashcards and reading material and all these videos that explain each little component. Because some people just are very, some people are very visual. They like to have the visual. Magnetic induction. Interesting here is, you know, induced voltage. You hear me talk about that all the time in induced voltage through magnetism, like with the transformers. To understand how a sine wave is produced, you first need to understand induced voltage. Any time that a conductor cuts magnetic lines of flux, a voltage is induced in the conductor. The polarity of the voltage is determined by the polarity of the magnetic field check and the, the direction of movement. The there are three Depending factors that determine the, the amount of induced voltage. One is the strength of the magnetic field. The greater the magnetic field strength, the more flux lines per square inch. The second factor is the number of turns of wire. This can also be stated as length of conductor. Mm -hmm. Basically, a conductor with more surface area can cut more lines of flux in a given time. The third. So also, this is the, this is how it's important when we talk about you know when you learn these basics, and then you start to understand primary to secondary turns ratio and the fact that you have uh, a a two to one is twice the number of turns on the primary than there are on the secondary, and and so then you start to understand, and so you create this magnetic field, and you and you start to you start to get it once you put all these little pieces together and that type of thing. So neat, neat, neat stuff. If you're, you're, you're into that stuff. And again, it's all explained in the reading material as well. And the videos go with the, the reading material. So it's all, and you got your, your review questions and you got flashcards and you practice tests and all that just to test your knowledge, uh, conductor conduction. So you've got more videos here, conduction in liquids, and you've got, uh, let's see here, basic electrical circuits. People were asking about that. So series, people are asking about series circuits. For example, series circuit. You know, you want to know the basics of series circuits. And on 
your screen, you can make this big screen. I just got it small for... for, for In this example know. circuit, the following electrical values will be determined. Total resistance of the circuit, the amount of current flow through the circuit, and the voltage drop across each of the resistors. Since the value of each resistor is known, the total resistance can be determined by adding the values of the resistors together. In a series circuit, the total resistance is the sum of the individual resistors. In this circuit, the resistors have values of 30 ohms, 20 ohms, 10 ohms, and 40 ohms. Just add them up. The total resistance in this circuit is 100 ohms. So basically, you just add them up. So in the difference in a parallel, you try to take the parallel and you try to break it down to a series because series just add up. So different equations uh, in this in this course. This one will cover all those things as well. Um, so, um, so mm, what else? Elia, hello, Mr. Paul. How you doing? Can you do a review of their NEC Illustrated section of the website? I am not sure what you're asking. You mean look at the Fast Tracks program? Uh, I'm not sure what um, what you're asking but that's that's that one so again we have residential commercial program industrial program uh, motor control understanding motor controls it's a pretty tough program um, you got to really pay attention in that program and you got to have some basic knowledge because reading a book and seeing things about motor controls and not putting your hands on it can be a tough relationship. So the folks that are in that program, we got quite a few in that program. Uh, kudos to you, bless your heart, because I tell you what, the motor control one is it's tough. When I even grade that work, I have to stop and go, okay, I gotta remember this. <laughs> I gotta remember this because it's not easy. It's certainly I did my share of motor control work but I never liked one day of it. Now, people love the challenge and that stuff. I just, I was ready to get it over with. I was like, okay, I know what we're doing today. I got to deal with some variable frequency drives or I have to do something. I just got to get it over with. Uh, but for those that are in that and love that, that's a that's a neat thing. So in our res we have residential, commercial, industrial, which are a great jump starter if you're a residential guy and you're getting ready to go into commercial. It's not just code. It's, it's practical stuff. Uh, and there's a lot of what's called labs. So you can do, while you're doing this at night, um, then you can actually go and, and put those into practice during the day. And we have some people that are um, companies that are have their staff in the commercial program. And what they do is they actually have the lessons that are in the program and they do them during the day. So they, that way they can kind of gauge how their, their helpers or apprentices are learning and that type of thing. So there's actually lab work and activities and all of those. So the residential people that want to move to commercial, they'll take the commercial. The commercial guys that want to learn a little more, uh, that learning curve on residential, they'll take the residential course. Uh, and then, of course, those people that are making the leap to industrial, then they make the leap, then, then they take the industrial course and they can learn all the, the aspects of industrial, that type of thing. So it's pretty neat across the you know, the platforms of the different different products. And, of course, then there's the, the good old grounding and bonding. Uh, and um, uh, of those courses, uh, my involvement, not in the 17 code, but in the 2020 code, is in the residential, commercial, and the grounding and bonding. I've had involvement in that um, and uh, in, the, in writing those books. And it's just a great course. The, the grounding and bonding book uh, itself is probably, and I think I have a, a video that links you to the best price you can get on those, is probably hands down the best grounding and bondings book that you should just have on your shelf. I get questions all the time, kind of call the day where, where an electrician was asking me a grounding and bonding uh, question, and it's literally literally covered in the book. I mean, there's, there's a lot that's, I mean, there's a SOARS book, and most people don't realize that the source book, but it's an IAI book, was originally written by a guy named Phil Simmons, who actually writes with me the one that's coming out, that's out now, that you can get for grounding and bonding. So 
and it's and, and the difference is that it's more logically c- flowed. I mean, it covers section per section, whereas the Soros book throws you all over the place, and you're not sure. Where, oops, you're not sure where you can go. Well, the grounding and bonding book that we have, uh, and the course, literally walk you through the the entire process all the way back from 250.4 all the way up. Okay, so it's pretty neat. It's very, and that's a neat course online too. Uh, to really learn and understand grounding and bonding. And that one, you know, doesn't take that long to finish. I think uh, he, he might not be in here tonight, but uh, uh, Ronald James uh, went through that course. And by the way, Ronald, I think it's Ronald. I'm sorry if I'm getting him, if it's James Ronald or Ronald James, but he just signed up for the motor control course too. So he's decided to undertake that course. Um you know, and that was the beauty of being able to make all our courses affordable uh, because, you know, there's many people that do multiple courses. And, I mean, that's great. I mean, I know it's money. It's hard-earned money, and I, we appreciate every bit of it. But we believe, based on what you get, that we've made it as affordable as we can make it and be able to get the access to it for one whole year, print out anything you want, print out every page if you want. Um, but we also can make all of these books available as well at a really a reasonable price if you're interested in a hard copy. Most people don't need it, but if you do, just reach out to me. Um, incidentally, uh, hey, Frank, yep, this program, that, that program looks good. If there's any other ones y'all want to see, the uh, again, we have the Fast Tracks, we have the Residential, we have the Commercial, Industrial, Grounding and Bonding. We have the Exam Questions Only in case you just wanted exam questions only. That's great for somebody that's in their last week or two for exam, and they ask me, what can they do? And at this point, I'm like, wow. At this point, you've either been studying, but have you been studying for a purpose? And if you haven't been studying for a purpose and you got two weeks to go, then this is the way to go. Get the, at the worst, get at least get the exam question only package. And that's just exam questions. But again, the difference between that and the fast tracks is only about 50 bucks, 40 bucks. And then you can, even after you pass your exam, you could still go into the fast tracks and learn some stuff. So that's pretty cool too. So you have to make your decision. Uh, There's a lot of free stuff too. Okay. But, uh, so that type of thing. Um, all right, we'll look at the commercial one. Okay. Let me, let me get it. That's, that is one of my favorite ones. Only because the sheer amount of uh, the sheer amount of information that you get in that program is going to be for for a lot of people it's going to be extremely overwhelming. But you take it a piece at a time, and it's not going to be overwhelming. You just take it piece by piece, and it's you'll 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 have no problem with it. All right, so. So this is our commercial, and it, it, it's, it goes over things like plans, reading plans. It doesn't get awful. It's not the definitive course for, for plan review or pure reading plans. It covers that, and it has drawings included, right? Okay, so, um, you know, those type, those type of things, you know, allows you. Uh, what do you, what do you say, Caleb? Thanks, Paul. Your communication is very reciprocal. Not sure I understand what it means, reciprocal, back and forth, me and you. <laughs> I don't know. But thank you. That's, I'm going to assume that's a compliment. Hold on. All right, so this is pretty neat because this literally walks somebody that might not be familiar with commercial through the process. Uh, you know, reading, working, drawings, entry level course it can get much more advanced than this uh and it reviews you and it's going to make reference to certain plans and of course the plans are included they're all included in here i'll show you that in a second so you get your introduction there's a plan of course you can click this and it'll blow it up okay but this is a drugstore and a bakery and it kind of walks you through uh and it'll talk about the calculations as well it talks about the electrical symbols uh these are you know nika so they're pretty standardized symbols Sometimes they change, but that's pretty standard. And you see here, these different things are pretty much, uh, you know, NECA driven, that thing, thing like that. So this is the circuit L211. 
and it's circuits one and three, and that's how how they depict it. Uh, here you go, right there. Uh, usually that be IG. I would think that would be indicate. Um, what do they say it is here? Equipment bond hashtag indicated uh, neutral. I think IG was isolated ground. Yeah, isolated ground. So I mean, it just goes through it to give you the understanding that you need. And and here's your here's your luminaires and explains each one of them. The general basic fixtures uh, that we call luminaires, but you know everybody referred to them as light fixtures forever. So it goes over all the symbols. Uh, and then it goes over conductor designations so that you know what a neutral point is, neutral conductor, connections, and kind of gives you the run through. You see I've got some things highlighted because I was using this in a course that I was teaching with a student. Uh, here's a, you know, this is the drugstore, which relates to that drawing. Uh, so anyway, it goes over all that. You all pretty much know some of the features. That it's just like anything else in our programs. Uh, conductors, branch circuits, switch receptacles. It really walks you through it. Motors and appliance circuits, feeder load calculations and installations, special systems, working drawings. Okay, so this is a little bit more advanced. Okay, you're, it's building you up. So here you're talking about the different circuits and the design. Uh, and, of course, this is an overall water heater. It's a three-phase water heater. Um, and shows you how to do the math. There you go. People want it. It's three-phase, 1.732, three-phase application. And it talks you through it. If you put the time in here, it's definitely you'll gain a lot of understanding. Here's the appendix that, that's tied to the plans, toilet room. So you see, it's kind of walking you through the design. And so you've got that. And you've got panel board selection, installation, the service, lamps, ballast, lighting, luminaires. But check us out emergency, legally required. Uh, and optional standby, overcurrent, fuse protection, short circuit calculations. Uh, it even goes into the cooling system as far as the electrical components for it. Uh, commercial utility interactive photovoltaic systems. And, of course, it comes with the database, and you get all of the blueprints. So I was just going to show you, uh, the, for example, the, the first floor electrical plan. So, okay, yes. And as you can see here, you get the drawing, and you can you will work the drawing out uh, as it makes you know it'll make reference through the book, the different drawings and different things like. But the key is you get to look and see that. So there's the circuit there, uh, and you see that's the home run. Okay, powering that, and here's this one's the emergency light this in this set entry. There's the fire alarm pull station. Uh, fire alarm here, uh, smoke alarm. Actually, this is probably a smoke detector. Um, smoke alarms typically are what you see in a residence. Smoke detectors connected to a, a monitoring system. It's a big difference. So you see this is circuit six. This is fed by circuit four, receptacle, placement, exit signs. You know, you get to learn all these things, the different luminaires, by looking at the lighting schedule. You'll see which luminaires you're dealing with here. And this is lumen A, B, C. Uh, and so on the lighting schedule, AC, here's a disconnect. Circuit for that is DS14-18. Anyway, you get all the blueprints, so it works you through that as well. Uh, and, of course, you get access to all the exam questions too because, again, we want to test your knowledge. Make sure you always stand sharp. But when it comes to luminaires, for example, you got your reading material. And you can go to installation. And it literally, you know, and again, as I tell most people, maybe you don't like to sit and read. Well, just highlight this bad smamma jamma, and I'll just read it. In this chapter, we discuss the NEC requirements for installing luminaires in a commercial building. Surveys have proven that lighting is one of the largest consumers of energy, kilowatt hours, in commercial. Okay, so let's say you didn't like, you didn't like her cadence. You're like, oh, following along with this girl. All right, you want her to be a little quicker. Well, let's see if I can pick this one. And let's see what we got here. In this chapter, we discuss the NEC requirements for installing luminaires in a commercial building. 
Surveys have proven that lighting is one of the largest consumers of energy, kilowatt hours. So that's really quick. That's kind of like I talk. <laughs> Many of you watched my videos. That's probably the speed that I go at. Anyway, so there's a lot of good stuff on the Luminaires, Dallas Electrical Service. Again, a um, lot of reading, but you can have it play it to you again. And it goes over the principal reason for installing a transport is either increase or decrease voltage. That's a powerful statement. If I want to highlight that, I can do that. Maybe I create a flashcard. Um, and, you know, if I'm studying, I can create that and say, okay, I want to add a flashcard. Check this out. If I'm just testing myself, I create the flashcard and I can put the term and I can put the value of whatever that question is and create my own flashcard on that very topic, right? Whatever I want to create, it'll, it'll make a little flashcard for it. So I can highlight this, right, and, you know, and, and actually right-click and copy it and paste it and create something. Right now, I'll, I'll remove all of that. And let's see here, remove highlight. All right, so anyway, you get all this information. It goes over liquid fill transformers. You can understand those. It goes over dry transformers, which is probably the more common that we see. Um, and it goes over transformer over current protection. Uh, and we talked about that. It gives you kind of a, a, tr a not chart that you can print this out. I know people that print this out by clicking here. And they actually print this out and they tuck it in their code book under the 450.3B because they like this, the way that it's kind of easy laying out and gives you a visual. And this is your overcurrent protection. This is primary and secondary. It's primary only, primary, secondary, primary only. Uh, so, I mean, it's just, you can print it. Everything that you have rights to print everything you want uh, in the program for 365 days, you got rights to it. Transformer connections, again, people want to see a visual, delta to Y configuration, primary side protection. It walks you through all of the aspects. Here's a, how we do the primary. It's a 50 kVA 480. Um, then, of course, we do the shortcut down here. 480 times 1.732 is 831. We just kind of know that. So it's 50,000 divided by 831. And that's how you get it. And it walks you through here the concept of the protection, protection required at the panel board, 408.36. And it kind of gives you references to every code piece. So it walks you through the primary and walks you through the second. Kind of what my videos do. Uh, again, it's all right there with a the graphic. You can print the graphic. Uh, single phase transformer gives you an idea of what it is. It's just one winding that drops off, say, from utility, it drops down, that can give us the 12240. And so you get to see how it's doing, or if you're tapping just one of the windings of a transformer. Delta systems, it kind of shows you the layout of a delta system. Uh, and it goes over three-wire delta. The other one was a two-wire delta. Here's a four-wire delta. Okay. Notice that it's connected at the points when you depict it like this, you see these two are connected, okay? So that's if you think of the delta, the, the points that are connected represent this point, okay? Sometimes harder for people to visualize it this way, but you just got to follow the connections. And this is how you're probably going to see it on an engineering schematic. So, you know, just one of those things to think about. So, I mean, here you get utility system that explains where it's coming from the utility, bus stuck coming in, uh, just a lot of good information. So that's your services, panel board selection. Uh, and I haven't been looking at the comments. If there's any, I'll look at it in a second, but I'm, I'm heavy into looking. I'm getting all excited up in here. Number of circuits, the ratings, pr protection, cabinet sizing, directory, uh, everything you want to know, working clearances, depth, really, you know, so let's look at the width here. So here's how we always look at it. Here's the equipment. It's 30 or greater, the width, the minimum of 30, or the width of the equipment, whichever is greater. Uh, and so this is giving you some examples here. Uh, here's the, you know, the working space, the height, okay? Working space from the floor up to six and a half feet or the height of equipment, whichever is greater. Uh, it kind of gives you a depiction of that working height. Entrance, egress from, making sure... You have an allowance for one entrance, but you have to usually have double the double the space in front of you uh, in, uh, in order to be able to achieve that. 
So um, just a just a plethora of good information here. Special systems. What special systems are we talking about? Let's see. And I've been through this already, but I got so many courses. Oh, surface raceways, communication system, floor outlets, fire alarm systems. People ask a lot of questions about fire alarm systems. Um, and so, oops, let me get rid of that. So this kind of goes through fire alarms, kind of talks about the fire alarm controller, enunciator. Uh, you see all this down here. It's generally a power supply. Many people, if this is at multiple locations, we call these, you know, these might be NAC panels. Uh, but this is NAC panel is supplying strobes. Uh, in the building, uh, interface, and there's your addressable pull station. You know, so it's got kind of the, it's kind of some of the basics on there. It's not a whole lot on fire alarms, just kind of giving you the, the basics of it. And it'll test you on some. So this is just some of the basics, loading calculations, just good stuff like that. All of my courses are the courses are the same price, three fifteen. All doesn't matter. That was the deal I made with them. Uh, you remember some of my courses, my residential commercials were, were $800. Um, and we made a deal. They're all just 315 across the board. And you get access for 365 days. Take all the quizzes, whatever, interact, ask all the questions you want, download, print, whatever you want uh, for that course. So, I mean, so that's the commercial one. The residential one is is massive. Uh, the commercial one's big too, but... Um, and then, of course, the industrial one. Uh, very few people, I'm going to take the liberty of looking at the industrial because many people shy away uh, because they don't, underst they don't understand industrial wiring and understand it's just a, it's a, a more advanced uh, commercial. But it also gets into site planning, bus feeders, trolley busways, signaling systems, motor controls, motor and controllers, uh, power factor, uh, lightning protection, site lighting. I mean, look at this. Developing a program for PLC, uh, program logic controllers, fiber optics, hazardous locations. So uh, we have, there's assessments that are associated with this, but you can see it goes through the basics of hazardous location. I have people that struggle struggle with hazardous locations. So it literally will go through and talk about class one, Division one, division two, atmospheric conditions, uh, the different group A deals with um, acetylene. And, you know, the group, group B is dealing with uh, flammable liquid produced vapor. I mean, it just kind of goes through and gives you all these things. And there's actually uh, a reading and there's assessments that you can take with the as well to test your knowledge. Uh, harmonics, um, of course, you also, with all our programs, you're going to get the the exam uh, the exam database as well. So even though you might not be taking an exam if you're doing this course, it's still good to test your, always test your knowledge. Uh, you get the blueprints as well for industrial layouts. Uh, harmonics, uh, I do a kind of class that explains harmonics, harmonic effects, Determining harmonic problems on systems, dealing with harmonic problems on systems. So how do you deal with it? Okay. So it kind of gives you a scenario, and it shows you if the triplet harmonics are present on the neutral conductor, add harmonic filters at the load. These filters can reduce the amount of harmonics in the line. Okay. Um, another way to do that is to oversize the neutral. And here we talk about the larger. So it gives you some practical solutions. I have people that actually will print this out. You can print out anything. And it, it gives you a, a, a way to, to, to deal with it. Um, and then one of them that I don't know that I see it on here is, there you go, transformer. So K-factor transformers can also filter out the harmonics. And, and it talks about the effects on it and all that kind of stuff. So this is a pretty neat one, power factor, uh, motor installations. Since, you, you know, you do motor installations in commercial, but you, you do them at a, at a huge different level a lot of times in industrial, large motors. And so this is a neat one because it literally walks you through motor efficiency, model number, type, tables, you know, direct current motors. I mean, you can see right now, and it gives you some cal multiple motor calculations as well. So I'll click on that. So it'll walk you through it, and it'll give you some values here. 
And then it'll, it'll just, if with those values, it will, somebody said the other night, is there a step process? Well, it kind of will help walk you through or at least show you the code references to walk you and talk you through. And here you see that it'll talk you through calculating, okay? The concepts of what you're moving through. All right, so anyway, bunch of good stuff when it comes to that as well in the motor. And here's the controller one. So this is motors and controllers. And it talks about the different types of motors, induction motors and in industrial plant, single speed cage inductor motor, induction motors, which people see the motor tables and they're like, what's the difference uh, in, in a wound rotor versus a squirrel cage versus something else? You know, in here, direct current motors. Uh, I mean, just look at, it's just a lot of info. If this is your thing and you're in industrial wiring and you want to get a better knowledge, so... It's all here, um, basic motor controls, signaling circuits or systems as well. And this system, you know, it talks about programming, fire alarm systems. Again, I looked at this one uh, a little bit in the other one, but this just goes through the pieces that are involved. Controller module interface, fire alarm module, what it would look like. Uh, there's a smoke detector. Uh, which, like we said earlier, it's generally going to be a smoke detector. Uh, it's funny how this says smoke detector, but it says right on it, smoke alarm. <laughs> uh, but generally, smoke detectors go with uh, something that's going to be controlled or is going to have some kind of controller, whereas a smoke alarm is generally what you'd see in your house. Uh, there's, your, there's your light for your candelas, and it kind of gives you some basic, basic stuff on it. Okay. Not overly complicated, so you should be able to move through it. Uh, panel boards, bus systems, a unit substation, uh, plans, reading, overview. You know, it's going to be something that talks about construction plans, planning, contour lines. Interesting that it kind of talks about all of these types of plans, stuff that you might see on a drawing. So you're getting ready to do field work, the stuff out in the field. And it kind of talks about some, you know, tenths, versions and decimals, what it is in fractions elevations, understanding, and here's where it tells you the details shown on sheet Z1, right? So if I was working on it and I'm into the, the, the everything that I'm working, I would go down here and you see that was the one it was referencing was Z1, okay? So here, the, the Z1, and of course, you can download it, but here's the, the actual drawings, an actual drawing set. And you just simply can, you know, take it, download it, you rotate it, blow it up, whatever you want to do. Uh, they're all available. Uh, the interesting thing about this is that uh, it didn't come with the original course, but I have added them for you. So if you bought the course just from Cengage, you wouldn't get the prints. And people complained about that. Well, I took the liberty of making sure that my courses have all of the documents that need it. So I have altered it to make sure that you have everything. So it's just in, if people that are interested in industrial, there you go. Uh, MB, you go to our website, masterthenec.com, just M-A-S-T-E-R-T-H-E-N-E-C.com, and all our courses are under the course link, and you'll see them all uh, there, and that's where you get them. You enjoyed doing it? You and Caleb, you enjoyed PLC? So some people love it. We have guys in our facility where I'm at, I work that – Literally, they love it. I mean, they love it. I mean, they do it all the time. Um, I, I'm not. I'm just not. I guess I'm old school. I'm, leave me the leave me the voltage and current and whatever and programming. I'll leave that to somebody else. Know how to do it. Know how to software to involve with it. Just don't have a. Just not. I don't get excited about it. But you know, the younger folks, the middle, the younger. I can see where that's there now. That could be. It's a specialty. You learn it. I'm tell you what. You do the. You learn motor controls, PLCs, and all that kind of stuff, then you can almost name your price anywhere that's necessarily needs that kind of thing. Um, um, oh, no, industrial, yeah. Uh, Benjamin, welcome. Which course do you recommend for someone who is not trying to pass a test but wants to improve as an electrician? Well, Benjamin, it, um, yeah, we have a lot of, like I said, a lot of our other courses are not designed for testing. They're designed to just improve your knowledge and your skills. 
Um, and they're purely voluntary. I have people ask me all of that. And they say, well, am I going to get credit for licensure? Am I going to get credit for renewals? I'm like, you know, our courses are, most of all of our courses, except for our partnership for your continuing education, and hopefully you're using that if you're getting your CEUs, because um, we partner with them. But at the end of the day, um, these courses are really just to build your knowledge. I mean, that's what it's all about. What's up, Danny? Thanks for joining. Um, I'd like to shout out to Danny. Danny did join our Patreon. So he's a Patreon member, so he's going to get access to all the future material that I do in the 2020. <laughs> Danny is going to is a monthly supporter of that and appreciate it. Um, and... Um, in our newsletter, Danny, hopefully you downloaded the newsletter in the 2020. I know y'all in Oklahoma and you're a bit off of that, but uh, there's going to be other content that we share up there. Don't worry. Um, as we as we move forward right now, I got to get busy on the 2020 stuff. Um, can't remember what I was talking about. Oh, I'm sorry, Benjamin. So um, that's what they're geared to. It really depends on what you're trying to go after. If you're a residential person and you're trying to do the residential um, then that's the course you really need. If you're going to be doing commercial work, that's the course you need. So they are perfect for people studying the code, studying electrical, studying practical applications uh, to remove the different errors they might have in the field, trying to remove those errors, those, those learning curves. Those books will do that, help move that learning curve. Nothing's going to take the place of the hands-on. But in conjunction with it, it just keeps you sharper, um, but it really depends on what you're, what you're after. That's why we have one for residential, one commercial and one for industrial. And of course the grounding and bonding covers all of them, you know? So, um, if anybody wants to see the grounding and bonding course, I find that probably cause I'm on code making panel five, that the biggest issues around the country I see is people just don't understand grounding and bonding. They just, for some reason seems to get people whacked on it. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, uh, what else? But yeah, it's whatever one, Benjamin, it's whatever one, all of them are going to make you a better electrician, obviously. But again, it's not going to take, it's not going to take the place of a hands-on, you know, doing it, just literally doing it, that type of thing. But again, that's why we, that's why we have apprenticeship programs. We work during the day and we go to apprenticeship at night. And this is the kind of kind of like your apprenticeship. Um, I had a, a today. I had a um, electrical contractor. I think purchase um, multiple programs for his for his for his folks that work for him. And they're going to basically. This is like a university. I mean, this is like a school. You get your login. You go into the portal. And I track your grades. I watch it. I see how you're doing. I can see everything that you do in the program. Okay. I can see everything that you do. And when you submit your competency reviews, if your grades are low, um, I'll tell you. I don't candy coat anything. And if your question is not 100% right, I usually take points off for it because you know what? You, you have to learn. And that's what we want. You want you to learn the right way. It's easy for me to be harsh because it's just us. It's We want to make it easier for you once you get out there, that type of thing. So... I, sometimes I can be harsh on my grading scale, but again, it's not like a, it's not a pass or fail, except for if you don't achieve your goals, then it's like a real life fail. And I don't want to see anybody do that. So we really work and try to help you understand the material. Hey, Danny, at the end of April, first of May, it's a good, it's a good time. Good time to spring. Spring is a good time to start the studying process. And uh, it's a lot of material, a lot of tests. A lot of quizzes, but it's all good. They're all good. It kind of simulates being in a in an you know in an exam scenario. It's one of those type of things. Um. Also tonight is what is it? Uh, Wednesday night. I can tell you that possibly Thursday night or Friday night, I might be coming on again and doing some. Uh, exam prep. In other words, just have questions and let you look up questions and we'll look them up together. Uh, we're not trying to answer them quick. We're trying to just look them up and learn. The speed comes as you learn some of the things and they become 
better to look things up. Again, I can't, I, I, if there was a holy grail for that, if I could bottle that and sell that to everybody and, and everybody 100% had no trouble and everything, first time you took the test, boom, then I'd bottle that. It takes a little time. Some people get in the first time. A lot of our students nail it. Um, but it takes a little time. You can't go into the fast track program and, and then think in a week or two that you're going to be able to do it. That's That would be foolish to think that way uh, because it's a structured structured type of – everything's in there logically in, in the order that it needs to be. So if anybody that's in that course, um, to fully appreciate it, you really have to follow each unit and do the, do the quizzes and then do the section quiz. But I think what some students aren't doing that are in the program, the Fast Tracks program, is that they're not going to the bottom and doing some of the quizzes or some of the practice exams while they're doing their other work. They need to do their lessons, and then they need to go take the a quiz So because there's a lot of them. So they should be taking at least one quiz a week, at least one, at least one quiz. Right. So, uh, oh, you talk about the PLC, eight car lifts and a PLC for each unit. Once you get the sensor wiring down and understanding which con uh, connection goes where, it's pretty cool. Motors involved too. Yep, syncs up the motors. Everything just. Um, the last one that I did was we were working on a, a PLC application for a coefficient of friction machine at our at uh, Encore Wire and that was all PLCs and uh, hooking all that stuff to, to get everything to sync out right and do everything so it was pretty cool uh, the business law book. I did find a place to get the business law book and do questions there you go the book is 65 and the online course is like 99 think that it's fair for the book they give access to the course for 365. Uh, that's what I do with my programs. Um, and it, if it's a course that's that's dealing with those those aspects of the of the legal part uh, and things like that, then I can tell you, be honest with you, Danny, that part's probably not going to be real difficult for you because you can actually get the book and they let you take it in for the exam probably, uh, but. If you want to focus on code and you don't want to have that other type of stuff just lingering over your head, right? Like, oh, I got to do legal part now or the business law and all that kind of, which is probably going to be very basic. It's going to talk about the, you know, penalties and fines and all this good stuff. Um, then, you know, one of the things with that is probably the concept of, of the legal stuff just makes it easy. You know what I'm saying? It just makes it it makes it much easier to take that stress away from the the law part. That's what people ask me. California and other states that have the legal part or the law part or the administrative part. I don't teach that. I just teach the NEC um, because it changes from state to state, and usually they make the books available. So I I would say that's probably not bad at all. Thank you, Danny. I appreciate the donation again. You, 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 Danny's covering some postage for everybody's stickers here. Appreciate you uh, doing that. Um, Danny's a big supporter, man. He's in the Patreon, and he's always donating. I appreciate you. Um, and we, we write it down. I keep a list of it so that we know when we're sending out stuff that we're covering it, and, you know, and, you, and we appreciate you. Um, so that's the... Um, that is the uh, industrial course. Any other courses you want to look at? So, I mean, again, we have the grounding and bonding, residential, commercial, industrial, motor control. We have the electrical electricity 101, which I showed at the beginning of the broad, of the stream, right? Uh, which is just a lot of fundamentals, um, and. Um, and we have the exam only, you know, exam prep question module only. And that's all it is, is just just a the mega exam, which you get anyway with the fast tracks program. So um, but but we have that. Um, and that's the basic courses. Um, I am working on another course right now that is um, calculations only. 
just calcs and that's it. Um, and hopefully I'll make that, a. I will make that available obviously, uh, when it's available for me to do the one on, on just the calcs only. I'll let you know about that one. Um, yep, Danny, any C is the one that's really going to make or break it. The other stuff's administrative, usually not that many questions and they're pretty common sense. And if you look them over, you get used to them. Common laws is things about renewing your license by the laws and the state and that type of thing. It's the code that'll get you. Okay. Um, funny thing about Texas is that Texas is based on a small part is on OSHA, uh, safety, which is hardly nothing simple. Um, and, uh, and you can take the book in, um, and then, uh, there's the, the code. Okay. Uh, and then there's administrative, there's the administrative for Texas and, and, and that is a document that you can download for that, that they allow you to take that in as well. But again, be honest with you, I tell most people, uh, the safety stuff was common sense and the administrative stuff, you just spend a couple nights looking it over and it's, it's just, it's just, it's just rules that you have to, to remember because they just want to make sure that the contractor is going to follow the rules, you know, renewing your license, penalties, fees, um, if you're late with your payment, how many months you can go before this? That's the kind of, that's the kind of stuff that's usually in those administrative things. They want to make sure that you know that if you get your license, that you're going to keep your license, and what happens if you violate it or do something? They want to make sure you can't play dumb with them and say, "Well, I didn't know." Well, if you if they put a requirement on the test and you pass it, then they say, "Well, you got to know, you passed the test, so we hold you accountable." That type of thing. So, uh, grounding and bonding, Caleb? Yeah, we'll look at the grounding and bonding. So, let's see here. I will. The grounding and bonding 101. Now, we used to have this ultimate guide one, if anybody ever asked about that. That's the one where uh, I actually met every week with the students, right? And... Uh, yeah, you can get the administrative part from the state. They have to provide you that. It's usually on their website or whatever, or contact them. They'll give you, you, you get that. Usually you can go and download it in a PDF, that type of thing, uh, that type of scenario. But yeah, usually all of those, they've got, what happens is, Danny, if you go look at the actual, if they do PSI, I don't know if they do PSI, they will actually give you the document, the reference documents that you need for that test. So I don't know if they do PSI, but you go to psiexams.com and go to Oklahoma and they'll actually tell you what books to have to cover those things. Yep. So that'll all be there. So just go get their bulletin from PSI and it'll tell you every book that you, what, what you need. And a lot of them, you go online and Google it and you're probably going to find them and that type of scenario. Um, and they're good books to have. If you're a contractor and it's administrative or a contractor with the laws, I tell everybody, we, we invest in our future. Administrative and laws and things like that for a state, it's always good to keep a, keep a copy for your company. You know what I'm saying? Just to have it. Now, I have it all in documents because I teach the course uh, in the state of Texas. So uh, I have the documents from the state so to teach others, to other people, if I hold one of those courses. I haven't done one in a while. Keep renewing it, but I haven't done I'm just never home enough to do that in my state. Um, oh, I'm sorry. We were going to look at the grounding and bonding. All right, so here's the grounding and bonding. So introduction to grounding and bonding. And you see there's a lot of extra things. This is neat that gives you the history of the Eufer ground, Herbert Eufer. It's interesting. Ground resistance testing. You get the exams as well. Always, in, I'm always including the exams. Uh, there's only one program I don't include the exams. I think that's the motor control. I don't include exams in that because most time when you're doing motor control, understanding you don't need the exam questions. But anyway, as you can see here, it's, you know, it's not a complicated module, but it covers the concepts that you really need to know. Uh, we have the quizzes, introduction to grounding and bonding. You know, if grounding and bonding is very fundamental, um, if you don't read more into it than it needs to be. Uh, so this kind of gives you the introduction to it. And again, 
if you're the kind of person, here's something that I highlighted for something that we're going. If you're the kind of person that, that just isn't really big on reading, then you just highlight it and just. There are several reasons for the confusion about grounding and bonding of electrical systems and equipment. Inconsistent use of terms related to grounding and bonding no doubt plays a major role. Heated debates are often held about grounding when the parties may not clearly understand the definition of the term being used to describe a component of the grounding system. So, if that's too fast for you, right, then you can slow him down, and we can go with a male voice. <laughs> I, I sometimes play with this, this stuff, and I go here, and I go, okay, read it. There are several reasons for the confusion about grounding and bonding of electrical systems. <laughs> so that is a Texas voice right there, because that's how we do it in Texas. Okay? That's how we talk in Texas. Not me, because I'm from Virginia, and I just go, pow, 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 pow. But anyway, sorry, all my Texas, you know. Um, so anyway, you could change the cadence of it and the voice in... Uh, to be honest with you, I don't, it's like ebooks, and it's pretty cool because when the Fast Tracks program, what I came up with this concept called, you've probably heard me talk about it, called ballistic training, and it's where you read it, you see it, you hear it, and it, stuff just seems to stick. So that concept works in all the programs. So you highlight it and you read it as it's playing, and it it's just something. It just about it sinks in better. And I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about it, so I coined it, okay? I, I just coined it ballistic training because it literally does make you read it, you register it, you lock it in, and those type of thing, okay? And so um, it's, just, it, it's, it's just a good option. It's there for everything. So that's, the, you know, that's the, kind of the grounding and bonding concept. Um, it goes through it, and again, it, it also has the gra graphics that are still, has a lot of definitions, Tries to explain the definitions so that people understand ground is the earth. Uh, and then, of course, earth is ground. Uh, and then, of course, it has the appendixes when it references it so that you can understand there's an actual guide to determine the soil electrical resistivity or resistance. There's uh, there. Here's a good graphic. So this is an example of when we talk about a separator-derived system people were looking at talking about the other night. So here's your generator, and here's your service coming in. Here's your transfer switch. Here's the a feeder panel board. And here you see all the poles are switched. So other than the grounding and bonding component, there is no physical connection between the primary side and the secondary. I use that loosely because that's transformer. But I'm just saying the part coming in and the part coming in from the generator, that when it's switching, it literally switches all poles, right? So that's a separately derived system. Transformers separately derived is you have a primary to secondary, and it's a separation, okay, between the primary and the secondary. And um, so that's you know, so this goes over the system and it tries to explain it because there is some fundamental things in 250.30 that you need to understand about separately derived systems and when it's not separately derived systems and what you do. Since this is a separately derived system based on the transfer switch. Notice that it has a grounding electrode system at the generator, whereas a typical residential that is going to have a solidly connected neutral, you're not going to have that ground rod there, okay? Now, you could have the ground rod. It just can't make a connection over to the grounded conductor. It might be something that the manufacturer or the generator requires. We talked about that the other night, okay? But, uh, you know, Danny, very experienced with generators. Uh, but that's kind of, you know, it walks you through it. So... But I still get calls every day that people screw things up with with uh, with uh, grounding and bonding. They just simply take it to the extreme and, and screw it up. Here's an example right here where you can't just drive ground. So this is a good example. People call me and ask me, can I drive a ground rod at a, a, a luminaire that's in a parking lot lighting? And I say, you can for lightning, but you can't and expect to clear an overcurrent device. It's not going to happen. Do Ohm's law, 25 ohms. If, a, if in a perfect world that ground rod was at 25 ohms, it's not going to work. It's just, it's just not going to clear a 15 amp or 20 amp overcurrent device. You can't use the earth for that function. Now, for lightning, 
if they add ask, ask for it, and again, that's going to be an auxiliary electrode, perfectly fine. What size conductor runs to the auxiliary electrode? Whatever size you want it to be. It's not the same as the required size for a grounding electrode conductor, which is, is, is at least it doesn't have to be larger than a six gauge copper or four aluminum if you can run aluminum to the ground rod, but you can't run it within 18 inches of the earth. So might not be able to. But at the end of the day, we see this all the time at light poles. But you just got to remember, I have to run an equipment grounding conductor with that circuit because I can't use the earth. But people want to. They want to drive ground rods everywhere and think that that's going to clear a device. It is absolutely not going to clear a device. So anyway, just really, the grounding and bonding, I'm, I'm most proud of this book. Um, and the graphics are just knockout. Definitely will get to understand the, the, the book in, 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 a, in a major way for granted. And it literally walks you through the logical flow of effective ground fault current paths so that you understand what it is. And then it kind of shows you an illustration. Here you have a, an ungrounded conductor faults out to the case. It energizes the case, comes over to this connection right here that's connecting. Again, this is floating. This is in contact with the green screw. You know, this is in contact. This is to illustrate that it's in contact with the metal enclosure. They are separated. Downstream, 250.24A5 states that. And here it inter gets on the can, and then it goes back on the equipment granite conductor, goes back over here on the main bonding jumper. They show them separated and be able to show this illustration. And then, boom, back to the source. And what it does is it allows the amount of fault current to take place at this location to skyrocket. And when it skyrockets, guess what happens? It trips out this overcurrent protected device amazing concept, beautiful thing. Uh, and it's just a well thought out book. So if anybody really wants to know grounding and bonding better, uh, this is the book to have. Now, whether you, again, it goes over Ohm's law and there's that thing I was showing everybody the other night with, depending on whether it's EIR, depending on which one you cover, boom, 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 boom. Hey, Demetria, I'm glad you contacted me. I'm glad you came on. Uh, Demetrio, you did purchase it, but you need to send me an e the email address that you used with your PayPal account um, is wrong, and they're holding it. So um, I need you to email me your email address, your real email address, um, and you need to contact PayPal to make sure that they get that corrected. Uh, I think it still went through. But we need to do that offline. Uh, but Demetrio, he's in. The, he's in. Going to get. He's going to be in the fast tracks program. Um, so um, yeah, email was wrong, and, and, and for some reason, um, and I, it still went through. So I don't know if it's some email, but but email me your right regular email address offline, and tomorrow I'll contact you and uh, and, and get you all and get you what you need set up. Okay, I'm glad you came on because I. Uh, I sent you a text, but I never got a response. Usually I text people before I call them in respect to their time because you're, or I believe you're on the West Coast or something. So out of respect for that, if the, if the text goes through, then I don't call. Uh, so that type of thing. It's, I'm very respectful of people. Um, and then, of course, people call me all the time, and they're like, they got to talk to me. If you call here, you'll either talk to me or Brittany, but most of the time it forwards over and you'll, you'll talk to me. So call me if you want to chat. Um, but, but hopefully you, uh, get that, get that cleared up in email with me and get one sent to me. Uh, and, uh, we'll, uh, get it all, get it all straight. But anyway, here's the Ohm's law. And that's pretty awesome. Uh, shows you and gives you some examples. So this is in our grounding and bonding. There you go. Check it that, check it that Ohm's wheel. This is what we were talking about earlier. The different examples, uh, of all the ways that you can solve, depending on what you're given, Right. Depending on what your the question asks you, this ohms will I can solve any problem as long as I'm given the variables. Okay. And sometimes I can take variables that I'm given and use it to solve it, but I have to start from one thing to get to the other. And so it's just uh, neat. So it's a, again well thought out book. I'm proud to be a part of the the, the new one in um, 2020. Uh, boy, we go into impedance and talk of basics of impedance and kind of current path flow, opening, measuring, how you're measuring current across uh, because current ceases to flow. Um, it's different things. It's just really neat stuff. Phil Simmons is the original author of this series. 
Uh, here it talks about the flow through the body and the seriousness of it. Series and parallel circuits. So while it's grounding and bonding, you really need to understand the fundamentals to understand grounding and bonding, to really understand it. Now, we all can learn the size of a grounding electroconductor. We know that we can, the, the overcurrent protective device is what we use to size the equipment grounding conductors. But do we understand why? And do we understand the circuits? And maybe you're the kind of folk like me who likes to know that stuff. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're somebody that's like, ah, no, I don't care. I just want to get my license. That's it. Somewhere down the road, you're going to want that knowledge, and it's so much more rewarding. We're only here one time. We only go across, we only are on this earth one time, and there's a certain number of people that are just happy with the minimum, bare minimums, and there's a certain number of people that just want to keep learning. I'm focusing on those people. I will help you get your license, but I'm also focusing on those people that want to long-term learn it and retain it. You don't have to quote it. You just need to understand it understand the concepts and trust me i have been in cases where i have been the expert witness on grounding and bonding cases where i wish they had gotten this book <laughs> i'm just saying because accidents happen ignorance can't be excused away um anyway so it's a great book i'm sorry i may catch up on some question um so All right, Caleb's asking you a generator question. I will, I won't answer it. I'll let, I'll let Danny, Danny answer. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Danny. So, um, generally residential generac, gener any generator, Kohler generac, whatever they are. Uh, typically, it's all about the transfer switch. If, if, if they want you to drive a ground rod, it. I can tell you right now, if an inspector wanted me to make a put a system bonding jumper in between the granite conductor in the in the equipment in the uh, granite electroconductor, uh, the equipment ground terminal bus, and the granite conductor bus inside of a generator, and wanted me to drive ground rod, and I knew it was not separately derived, um, I would go over their head. Um, I would get them in some serious doo doo. It's all based on the transfer switch. If your transfer switch is not switching the neutral, then out there at the generator, you keep it separate. Basically, I tell people that this way to remember it. Here's an easy way to remember it. If your transfer switch doesn't switch the neutral, then you treat that generator just like it was a range for conductor. Keep it separate. Okay? Or as, as the same as it would be a downstream remote distribution panel. Keep it the same. Make it simple. If you switch the neutral, treat that generator like a service. Even though it's not, Treat it like a service. It's just an easy way to remember it. If they, if the manu manufacturer tells you to drive a ground rod, that's fine. If it's a lug there, go for it. If it's not, don't do it. Um, but again, you don't want you want to make sure that you remove the system bonding jumper unless it's separately derived. Uh, let's see here. Anyway, so that is. Um, Yeah, it's not the exact wheel that's on the Ugly Danny because uh, the Ugly book is actually written by Bartlett Jones and, and, and Charles Miller, a friend of mine, the one that writes the Illustrated Guide. He's doing that book. You really can't have a, you really can't have a copyright or a trademark on an Ohm's wheel. I mean, it's just, it's just formulas. You know what I mean? So it's just a bunch of collection of formulas oh i should show some features here guys so yo that's you know obviously you heard the part we're going to read it to you you can add a note for later you can you can create flashcards. you can highlight the text if it's important text that you want to do uh, if you want to jump to something you can go up here and you can jump to any part in in, in the program you want uh, you can print anything you want you can bookmark anything you want you can change the text size on it if you can't see it depending on if you're uh, all of this i should also mention that all of these programs are also accessible from your phone. From your phone. So there's an app for it. So I can work from my phone. I don't want to be squinting, but I can zoom in and out. You know? So you get an app, you download the app, you can do it all from your phone as well, tablet, whatever you want. It's very versatile. You're not locked to your PC or your MacBook or whatever like that. Mm. Um, New Jersey, again, uh, Mark, um, 
Well, how do you pass the test? If it, it's obviously it's an NEC based test, so you you get something that's a structured testing program like our Fast Tracks program. Our Fast Tracks program is designed to help you pass electrical exams and learn the code. Uh, if you have any laws or administrative, then you you get that information directly from the state. Um, and it's just usually just trying to, it'll just be administrative stuff, pretty common sense stuff, but you might need to know that the first penalty is $10,000 or it's just money things. I don't teach that stuff. I teach you the National Electrical Code. That's the part that's going to make or break whether you pass an exam. And my course is for exam prep is called Fast Tracks. Go over to masterthenec.com, click on courses, you'll see Fast Tracks. And that is the, the program that, that we use for exam prep. Um, so anyway, that's all of my, my courses. Um, are all they, oh, you know what? Let's do that real quick because people, people don't know. So what I'll do is, um, where do you go? So you go to masterthenec.com. I'm sure you all are familiar with this by now. Here's the website. Okay. The fast tracks you can get there from right on the main screen by clicking the click the link here. But if you scroll down, you'll see all the courses available down here. Here's my newsletters. Here's the grounding and bonding course. Here's the industrial. Here's the commercial. Here's the motor. Here's the residential. Here's the fast tracks. Here's the electricity 101 course. They're all accessible. Uh, and here's the one for 10 student and 15 student bulks. These are the ones that the companies buy for their for their employees. Um, but also you can get there by going to courses and all of our courses are listed right here and you just click on the one you want. Here's the fast tracks, click on the fast tracks. Here's where you can get our mobile app, which just allows you to stay better connected with us. And here's the fast tracks program talks about the 17 units, everything you're going to get in it. Okay. Um, and there you go. And you click on this, quick review, okay? So I click on it, just kind of show you what it looks like. And here's what it kind of looks like. And you just, those that have done it already, you go down here, you simply add to the cart, and you're good to go. So that's the, that's, you know, and then of course we have our podcasts and our webinars and merchandise for those that are interested in our, our swag. We have tons of swag, shirts and what goody goodies. So you can get there from here. If you're like Danny, you get 10% off on everything when you become a Patreon member. Here's our Patreon page. Actually, you're seeing my page. So uh, public view. So here's what it kind of looks like how you become a Patreon and uh, get involved in our Patreon stuff. Um, if you're interested, uh, let's see here. So at any rate, okay. So that's kind of our courses. We have a bunch of them. Um, the 2020 courses we'll be rolling out are the residential and the commercial one and the industrial one will be rolling out in a couple weeks for those that want to get the 2020 and get jump start on that. Um, so um, that is uh, doing with that. Um, I don't know what else to, 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 I don't know what else to talk about tonight. Okay. I don't know what else to talk about tonight. <laughs> Paul, you're full of swag. <laughs> well, you you chose your words nicely, because I've been called worse. Somebody asked me if I would put together a curriculum package where they it's kind of like a university type of thing, and we're looking at putting together a a program that that is. Be honest with you, each one of these courses have a year access. So we have basically a four-year program, whereas you could study residential, commercial, industrial, and grounding and bonding, uh, you know, or 
Uh, somebody said, could you do it in a program where you did four of them in a year? So since it's three, six, nine, 12, three month program, very intense. And we are looking at doing uh, all four programs in a year and giving a, a certificate of completion program. Uh, but we're trying to see what we can do to get certain credits for that. But uh, right now it would just be an achievement. Oh, the only other program that we have, I didn't mention this, is the CMECP program. And it's that's, uh, that's a tough one there. That uses a fast tracks program base, but we've added a lot of other stuff. But it, that is for master electricians only who want to raise their game and become a certified master electrical code professional. And that is a certification mark that you use acronyms behind your name and, and you can use it in your advertising. And we're working on that being uh, an, an industry type of mark. Um, and we have trademarks on that. Um, but um, you know, that is a, it's, it's tough. That's a tough program. You have six months to complete that program and it is, it's intense. Plus you got to do a proctored exam and then you have to do a five on one interview and you have to pass that. It's, it's not that you can't, we're not trying to trick you in the process. That never happened, but it's just, you have to be really dedicated. So we never did that program to, for it to be a moneymaker. That's a program for pride. That's a program to get you from, from up to the, this upper level of knowledge. Great for foremen, uh, great for, uh, lead men, great for owners of companies. It's, it's really a marketing gold. Uh, but then you get access to other stuff in our program, discounts that'll pay for the program itself. And it, 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 the program's cheap compared to what you get. Uh, and, uh, but anyway, um, it's, a, it's called the CMECP. Just go to mycmecp.com and you can read more about that if you're a master electrician. We also have an apprenticeship program for journeymen where you get a full year to get all the coursework done, okay? So, again, masters are held to a different level. Six months, you got to be done. A journeyman, you can use that to prepare for your exam. If you want your master's exam, you can use that with the intent that you're going to pass the master's within that year because part of the prerequisite for that, you get a whole year, but you've got to become a master by the end of that year to be able to take the proctored and the final five-on-one. So it gives you a little longer, okay? But it puts, it puts the pressure on you. You have to become a master because we're trying to promote people to move up to be a master. You know, move forward. Get to that pinnacle. And if you're in a state that doesn't have master licenses, then the equivalent would be like electro Ohio. Ohio doesn't have masters, right? But they got electrical contractor, which is equivalent to a master. So we, there's an equivalence program as well. Uh, let's see here. I'm not sure the conversation that Danny and Caleb are ha having, so I'll let them handle that unless they want to ask me a question. But um, I, I tell transfer, uh, gener uh, transfer switch, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Panel, generator, service, transfer switch. If the transfer switch switches all the ungrounded, that's the hots, and the neutral, then the generator is separately derived. Okay. You know what I'm saying? If it's not switching the neutral, which is probably 99.9% .9 of residential generators, then it's not separately drive. Treat it. Make sure you separate the ground and the grounding at that generator just like you would in a remote panel or just like you would at a, dr dr a dryer or a range. That same kind of concepts. We don't want to have circulating current. Um, so... Oh, easy. Oh, easy. What did he say? Hold on. He said, easy, Paul. Chill, man. We're just having a conversation. <laughs> it's all good, Caleb. I don't get that worked up. I just want to make sure that everybody's, you know, everybody's all right. I said that, Danny. Um, all right. So I don't have, oh, any, incidentally, um, the, 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 the next round of, um, stickers i still got stickers uh they're going out if you want some more stickers just holla tell your tell your people that you work with stickers but you got to let me know what you want you got to send me an email
hey, I need an email sent. And the email is info, I-N-F-O, at master the NEC, kind of like you see the master ticking across the top, uh, dot com. And just give me your name and your address and tell me which stickers you want. You're always going to get the podcast one. But if you want just a generic electrician, if you want the master electrician, if you want the journeyman electrician, if you want the code mafia, <laughs> or you want the, the kind of one of my favorites is this one, is the electrical wizardry. I think that's pretty wicked. Um, and, of course, we have our podcast one. While supplies last. And then we'll move on to something else. Um, for those hopefully don't get offended, the, the, the God uh, family and code one will be in the next batch. So we will have those for those that would want, want the, that one. And I'll have a couple other, hopefully by then, I'll have some couple other designs that we've been working on. Should be interesting. Um, I do want to come up with an, with an ohms wheel. Uh, formula wheel with with our logos in the middle of it. I think that are pretty pretty neat. Um, also should mention, hold on, let me grab it. For those that want the real big ones or the real nice, and this one's available in all the options, even the one with the God, the family, and code is the big ones. Now, these big ones are high definition. I mean, these are well done. This is a real premium sticker. They're not overly expensive. I think I can't remember. It's seven ninety nine. dollars but that's a big sticker. goes on your box. We have these available in the master, the journeyman, the electrician. The, we even have these available for inspectors um, and engineers um, over on our website, electricianpride.com. So these are the real nice ones. Uh, so there you go. Um, people want those. I can't give those away. <laughs> they can't give those away. But if you want them, go get them. Um, so let's see here. Um, all right. Well, I don't have anything else to say tonight. We did about two hours. Uh, if you got anything, anybody wants to ask about the program, let me know. Um, and I'm more than happy. Okay. And I'm more than uh, you like the big one? Yeah, these big ones, these big ones are pretty, these, these big ones are pretty nice. I will admit, they did a good, they do a good job, the company that does these for us online, uh, do a good job on that, okay? Oh, you mean, you mean the, 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 the ones where they, they stick out? Um, I don't know if they offer those, um, through, through who I use to make those, the, the static cling ones, that type of thing. Um, I'll be honest with you at my office, I have one on my window so that everybody in the hall sees it, but I taped it up there. I just put tape on it. Um, that type of, that type of thing. Um, but no, I'll see if they have it. I don't know if they have that, but, uh, we'll see. I'll look into it. Yes, it would be. It would be cool to put that big one on the side of your van. I have them on, actually, I have the big one on the back of my truck, and I have the big one, and I have the little one up in the mirror, in the window. So in my truck window behind me, I, I, I have it on the outside. So uh, since I most of the time give these away anyway, and, and we'll be continuing to do that, uh, they'll always be available. And uh, put it on the outside, and if it weathers in, in a year, just scrape it off and get another one. I'll send you another one. Um, so um, they're not as high definition as as these big big suckers are, right? So I mean they're they're pretty pretty good, and the big ones actually commemorate the uh, the fact that we started the electrician live. I mean I've been doing podcasts and video casts since two thousand and four, but um, um, this one shows that we established the electrician live in twenty twenty, so that type of thing. So, I like to think this is weatherproof. It stays out there. It'll last. I've had mine on my vehicle for a couple months. It still looks like new. Come on. What do you expect for that? That's a big sticker. 
anyway, we got them. We're going to keep coming up one. Uh, we're going to keep coming up with some um, some new stuff in, um, and and get you hooked up, uh, Danny. You need you want to you want one of these big ones. You want one of these big podcast ones. Uh, Danny's a Danny's a Patreon uh, member, so Danny, if you want one of these big ones, now I have these. I don't have the other ones. You can use if you want one of these big ones. I'll, I'll I'll get one out to you. I'll send, I'll make sure you get one. Okay, and I'll get you and I'll get you I'll get you some extra I'll get you some extra wizards. You like the wizard stuff. So I don't have the I don't have the wizard in the big one. You can order one online, but I don't have the big wizard. I have these, and I have limited these. So I'll send you one of these. If you want one. All right. I don't have anything else to say tonight, guys. I appreciate you all uh, for coming in. I just wanted to impromptu come in at the last minute. We're about at two hours. Um, hopefully you enjoy these. Um, I think probably be on, if I'm not on tomorrow night, I'll be on, uh, you just got to make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if not, I'll be on tomorrow night or after. And what we'll do is uh, we'll do uh, an hour or two of uh, exam questions, look up questions, look them up, different type of look up stuff. We'll, We'll do that and uh, just get you get your juices get your juices flowing for looking at looking up questions. So uh, get your co books. Make sure you have your co books with you. Uh, and um, we'll do it that way. Maybe we'll uh, we'll do some. Maybe I'll do some prizes. Maybe I'll do some prizes. Do something. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to make it interesting as we move further on into this series. I got. I told y'all the other night. I got some special stuff coming. Um, so, you know, um, as we move on, I want to, maybe we'll start doing some, maybe some giveaways and some prizes and, uh, you know, and I don't know, Caleb, I don't know if it'll be tomorrow or it'll be Friday because my wife might kill me if I've been on three nights in a row. So it might be Friday evening. Okay. It might be Friday, but just kind of subscribe. Make sure you subscribe, uh, to the YouTube channel. All of y'all make sure you please give me thumbs up. It seems to, you know, work better for you too when you get the thumbs up. If you're haters, sorry. You know, I, I have my share of haters. Um, but I mean, how can you hate somebody that at least gives up their time to try to help? It's kind of, I don't even get it. It's when I watch a video on YouTube of somebody singing and I see, and they're really good. Like there's this guy named Teddy Swim who's a freaking amazing man and he's gets somebody's thumbs down. I'm like, really are you that miserable in your life that you got a thumbs down somebody who's uh, trying to do something on their own and, and you might not like it but really a thumbs down is it really i just i don't think i've ever thumbs down anybody but i get my share of people that don't like stuff and they don't like what i say or i offend somebody or or whatever because i'm not always politically correct and i don't really care um i know that i help literally thousands of people get their licenses and, 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 and learn the code and learn electrical. And that makes me feel good. And I get a lot of stuff from people that send me a lot of stuff, uh, thanking and thinking, and, and I appreciate everybody, everybody out there that subscribes and, and joins and, and anything you buy or anything you, you use or anything that you achieve with or whatever, whether it's my free content or pay content, whatever you do, I appreciate you immensely for what you do and to helping us be able to do this for you. So anyway, I am going to have to sign off and, and spend some time with the fam, but I appreciate every one of you and, 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 and make sure you subscribe, thumbs up, share these with your friends at work, share those with other people, um, you know, that type of thing. And um, it definitely is Danny. It's always a good feeling. I find that, no matter how low down, and we've had some issues, family things, how low you get, when I get that message from somebody that they succeeded or achieved their goal or they're happy or their life or they're bettering that man, it just, that's it. And that's what gets me motivated. I'm still passionate about this industry. I love to teach. I love to talk things. I'm, I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And when I'm right, I'm right. And if I can learn and you can learn and we can learn together, that's what it's all about. So that's what I'm here for. So hopefully y'all enjoy it. Share it with your friends. Till next time, folks. Stay safe. I appreciate y'all.
I did it again, guys. Boy, I have no control over my mind. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. All right, guys. Peace out. You've been listening to Electrician Live with your host, Paul Abernathy. I had to come back. Caleb, you are absolutely right. My wife does love me, and she is amazing to put up with me for coming up on 30 years of marriage. Amazing woman. She must be a saint. Anybody that can put up with me for 30 plus years has to be a saint. I love her. Every, every, every good man has a better woman standing right there by their side. Or if you don't go, go looking for one. If you don't have one, go find one. You're out there. All right. Enough of that. Love y'all. God bless. You've been listening to Electrician Live with your host, Paul 